Bless America. Hello, everybody. I am the Talk Radio Protégé, and this is the Protégé Program. Thank you for joining me. It is Monday, and we're back to the grind. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday. I know that I did, and I am ready to get back to the swing of things. Uh, Last week, a developing story came up that has sent waves of apprehension, I'll say, through uh, many in the right wing of YouTube and Twitter in particular, because um, it's believed that net neutrality created the alternative media, and Trump's FCC is a in the process of reviewing and seeking the repeal of the Obama-era net neutrality regulations. Uh, He did this in a statement last Tuesday, and in case you didn't know, here's a brief uh, recap of what what net neutrality is in its current iteration, what it does. on Wikipedia, but uh, this is the short, short version. Uh, Net neutrality is the buzzword name for rules placed on internet providers in 2010 by the Obama FCC. In 2014, a D.C. Circuit Court ruled that the FCC didn't have the authority to enforce the 2010 rules under the, at the time, current classifications and law. In response to this ruling, the FCC classified internet providers so that a different law applies, giving the FCC more authority over internet providers. In 2010, when the law was implemented, a uh, 1992 law was the uh, standard by which the regulations were being applied. This is, again, information that's available on Wikipedia. 2014, the court case happens, and uh, the FCC reclassifies internet providers so that in addition to the 1994 law, a 1934 law uh, applies in addition to the 1994 law. The approximate effects of these rules are that no web service can be delivered any faster or slower than any other. It's, uh, again, that is the bare bones, very basic understanding of mine of the current net neutrality applications. Repealing these rules would allow internet providers to supply different services at different speeds. Again, it's a very basic understanding of the rules. The panic, uh, well, maybe panic is a little unfair way of describing it. The fear, especially from the current political outgroup in technology, which is everyone to the right of Karl Marx, is that their preferred services, namely uh, YouTube, Gab.ai, Twitter, uh, or other places, uh, will be throttled because of the politics of the... uh, of the vocal individuals in this group by a cabal of left-wing internet providers. And I do share this fear to a certain extent. You know, um, if a website like Minds.com or uh, I suppose a a more um, visible example is 4chan, uh, is, can be tarred and feathered as an alt-right or far right-wing or neo-Nazi gathering site, then the left-wing internet providers are more likely to throttle access to that website if they are allowed to. Now, under current net neutrality rules, they're not 
uh, you know, supposedly they're not allowed to do that. So it keeps access to locations like that open. The fear is that a much more mainstream website like YouTube might be uh, classified, tarred and feathered as a uh, far right wing dangerous website. Or if the internet providers have the capability, perhaps just the content from specific individuals on YouTube can be classified as hateful, neo-Nazi, far-right wing, and alt-right uh, propaganda, and therefore throttled, which would effectively kill uh, these individuals' way of propagating their information. That would include someone like me, to be sure. I suppose, however, the difference between myself and these other individuals with whom I share a lot of perspectives, except on this issue, is that I trust the market to resolve this issue much more than I trust the government to resolve this issue. Um, in regulating communications, telecommunications, technology in the past, the government has throttled innovation and technical progress in these fields. Um, FM radio was invented, discovered, whatever uh, term is applicable, in 1934. And it wasn't until the 50s, 60s, you know, decades and decades later that the first FM radio was sold in the United States of America, because under the current system, um, <clears throat> the government regulates, the, or under the system at the time, the government was regulating the AM uh, radio space, the FM radio space, and the AM uh, station owners were able to lobby for the government to keep FM radio suppressed. And these days, FM radio is the more popular of the radio frequency, of the radio waves, the airspace. Airspace is dominated by FM radio, but its release was delayed by decades because the government was involved in control over the radio space. The Obama era rules, as described by uh, the commission chair are a power were a power grab by the Obama administration. Uh, I believe he says so in this uh, in this article, or he's quoted as saying so by this article on the Patriot Post. Um, and Chairman Pai's solution is to target specific uh, bad apples for sanctions rather than sanctioning the entire internet for fear of what might happen. And I, for one, think that this is the correct solution. You know, the, the fear, as has been expressed by um, alternative media personalities, from uh, left-leaning individuals to right-leaning and right-wing individuals is that the cabal of internet providers will all collectively conspire to throttle access to alternative media in favor of the old media, dinosaur media. And that no one is going to, um, that there will arise no internet providers who will be able to provide their, uh, access to their content at uh, competitive speeds. And I think this is somewhat analogous to the scenario of um, the telephone market. I didn't live through this, so obviously I'm only telling you uh, secondhand information that I've been able to gather. But there was a time when there was one telephone provider, and then there were two telephone providers, and now we have multiple national providers, at least uh, 
by my count, four. We have AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. You know, just off the top of my head that I'm able to name. And there are dozens of other regional telephone providers as well. Uh, if you don't want a national telephone provider, maybe you don't make national calls, maybe you don't need to be able to, maybe you don't even travel nationally and you just live in a regional area. Maybe you live and do everything that you do in a single metropolitan area. You can use a regional telephone provider. Um, the internet is already in a similar situation. Um, rural pe people that live in rural locations can't get internet through AT&T or Cox or um, Suddenlink or any of the other uh, you know bigger city type internet providers. They have to go through regional internet providers or satellite internet providers. These are the alternatives that people are uh, that people have the availability to use. And I think satellite internet is going to be the future of internet providers. Um, the infrastructure of the internet is one thing that I hear people talk about a lot when they talk about net neutrality and how important it is. Uh, the way I understand it, the construction of internet infrastructure is expensive, and there's a limited amount of internet infrastructure that a limited number of companies have control over, and therefore it is uh, feasible that a cabal of internet providers uh, through the infrastructure companies could throttle <coughs> outgroup uh, voices, but if the internet provision was not limited to the hard infrastructure, the, the fiber optic cables, the hard lines, if it could be, uh, if satellite internet companies could make themselves more appealing through perhaps offering access to uh, the high profile websites, the a small number of websites that everyone uses that a lot of people would like to invest capital in, perhaps those satellite companies could improve their infrastructure and become viable alternatives for more uh, websites for access to a wider array of websites. We can't know if that uh, we this can't be realized if the uh, market is throttled in such a way that benefits the existing infrastructure. And uh, that, I believe, is a perfect, perfectly reasonable expectation of what, these, what the repeal of these rules might uncover. Again, I'm not an expert in this. Um, I'm hoping to get to read a book that talks about this subject in much greater detail, and maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll do a book review on that when the time comes. But uh, that's all that I have to say on the topic at this time. I've been thinking about doing a video on this uh, for a while now because the topic of net neutrality uh, has been talked about ever since uh, Chairman Pai got into the position because he's a known opponent of net neutrality. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Let me know if you think net neutrality is something that needs to be kept in place. Uh, Maybe it's something that's antiquated on old rules out of 1934, as I said. Uh, but most importantly, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a single video. I'm uploading every single weekday thus far without fail. Again, thank you for watching. Until next time, good night and God bless.